Hey everybody, welcome to um, Psy260 Health Psychology, Eureka College. Um, many of you already know that. So we're going to jump right in to the the slide. So I'm going to I'm going to to jump right into those um, open those slides up and switch to this orientation. So you see me? I'm here in the corner. There's the there's that. I'm not sure why chat's not showing up. Great. That's that's always great. Um chat, where are you? Um cool. Oh, there's there's supposed to be chat. Oh, it just wasn't just people weren't saying anything. Okay. So We're going to finish up health behaviors today before we move on to new stuff, other specific kinds of health behaviors. And so um, I wanted to uh, show you all another ad that I found um, with respect to this. And so this is a Healthy Habits commercial. It's kind of gross because it has to do with eating. Um, it's a company, so obviously they're trying to sell something. So just be aware of that. But, you know, health behaviors. Okay. Um, it's not it's not proper behavior. Um, it probably is lagging for everyone. I apologize for the lag. When you watch videos through uh, stream, it's it's gonna lag. So I'm going to limit my video usage when we're doing these streams. Um, and I'm gonna leave the video up for just a second so you can grab um, the uh, name of it if you want to go watch it later. Uh, so, yeah, the lag is going to be there because, you know, everything requires some bandwidth. Um, luckily, I'm going to upgrade my modem here in the middle of the week. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed that that's going to that's gonna help deliver these courses a little bit better. As soon as the video stopped playing, it was like, ah, no more lag. All right, so let's jump back into... So we're going to do a little activity to start uh, a... Um, Locus of control. So your health behaviors have a lot to do with how you think of how much control you have. Okay. So your ability to do stuff. We talked about e efficacy, I believe, you know, a thousand weeks ago. Um, and so your ability to do stuff, and it really has to do with your um, what you think you might be effective uh, in, right? So part of that has to do with how much control you think you have over your own healthy behaviors, okay? So there are three scales to this activity that we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna give you each of these scales. You can do them in a Word document. You can do them in, in on a piece of paper. I don't, I don't really care. Um, you can sound off in the, uh, you can sound off in chat what your numbers are and when we go through and score these, that's fine too. But so we're going to talk about these scales, and then I'm going to give you the questions for you to answer. Okay, so the internal health locus of, uh, uh, locus of control scale uh, is a, a measure of how much you think you have over your own health, how much control you have over your own health. Power for others measures how long, how, how long, how much uh, you feel other people, not other things, but other people have control over your health. And lots of times that just boils down to family, friends, physicians, other health professionals like nurses. Hey, this is uh, oddly relevant right now, right? And then the chance uh, health locus of control is whether you feel your health is due to luck, fate, or chance. And really, this encapsulates uh, the... Uh, 
external circumstances, so your environment, that sort of thing. Okay, so for each question that you see, so there's three slides. I have one slide for the I scale, one slide for the P scale, and one slide for the C scale. You're sorry, the uh, three there is a little uh, a little wonky over here. So um, there's it's five, four, three, two, one over here. Okay. Um, so five is strongly agree, one is strongly disagree. You've seen these scales um, forever and a year ago. So, you know, uh, pretty much uh, just answer it as best you can for how much you agree with each of these statements. Everybody ready to go? Alrighty. So here is the internal scale. It's only these five questions. I'll leave it up here for just a second for you guys to read it and answer them. Remember, five strongly agree, one strongly disagree, three neither agree nor disagree. Um, hopefully the stream is not stuttering or lagging right now. Um, like I said, I'm going to have to uh, deal with some of these internet limitations here and there. It makes me sad because I like showing videos, as you all know. All right. Moving on to subscale two, there are, I think, six questions on this one. If you, um, if you need to go back, just, just pop in chat and let me know. I am happy to go back. Okay. Uh, and just fair warning, if you hear craziness uh, above me, like the sounds coming from above me, that's because, you know, the children are home, the dog is home, everyone's home. Yeah, Logan, I'll go back uh, uh, in um, in just a second. We'll go back to the fir uh, first... Uh, we'll go back in order, I suppose. So here's the third subscale, and then I'll go to one, and then I'll go to two, and then I'll go to three. Hi, Ellie. See? Even... Come in. Come here. Come here. If you're going to be like that, say hi. Hi. <laughs> who, who is it? It's my class. I'm recording class right now. Who is it? it, it nobody. It's just me. Yeah. All right. Good times. <laughs> okay, can you go back upstairs, please? Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So uh, that's number three. This is for the chance... Locus of control, I'll go back to one, two, and three here in order. Okay, so there's uh, number one again, in case you missed any. Right on cue, I said, if you hear anything, it's children. They're coming on down. Hello, hello, hello. Here is two. And here is three for the last time. Again, let me know if I need to go back to any other uh, of those. Okay. Um, and then I have scoring instructions on the next slide. Scoring instructions on the next slide. All right, scoring instructions. Hey, you just add them up. <laughs> but uh, keep your subscales separate. Keep, keep your subscales separate. Um, because... Uh, I'm sorry, Bushra. Um, uh, maybe reload the stream. And here's the breakdown for each of your scores, okay? So each one, you know, has a range of 5 to 6 to 25 to 30. So the first one only has a range of 5 to 25, uh, but uh, the other two 
the other two uh, have um, uh, ranges from six to thirty. Okay. So what is this? What what does your locus of con control mean? So I have um, high. C, you know, I have examples for what a high C might be on this slide. What a moderate P might be, or a low I. And you can kind of take those examples and sort of morph it to what uh, what part of the spectrum that um, you fall into as far as what number you're at. Okay, so if you have a high C, obviously you think that your health is a matter of chance. Okay, those spring breakers down in Florida, good example of high C. Good, really good example of high C. Like the guy who was just like, you know, if I get Corona, I get Corona. I think he was talking about beer, but you know, be that as it may, uh, that's a high C because he's like, it, you know, whatever happens, whatever happens. Um, that's that that uh, that um, invulnerability idea that runs through young adult. You know, Teenage years, uh, late adolescence, young adulthood is this idea of invulnerability. Of course, we're not invulnerable, um, but that high C might uh, make you think you are. Okay, um, so, and moderate scores in any of them are pretty decent. Um, what you really want, what you really want, is high I. Okay. Because that's a belief that you control your own health, right? Um, and if so, if you're missing the the high I, moderate I, not bad, not bad. Uh, if you're missing that uh, high or moderate I, so low I scores, um, you sort of feel like other people might be controlling your health, uh, might be... Um, the reason you're healthy or unhealthy, okay? Um, yeah, go ahead and sound off in chat if you want to share your um, your ranges. We can go back and look through it. Uh, we can go back through and look at it in the recording and see who just needs a, a wake-up call. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, not a wake-up call. Of course not. I wouldn't do that. Um, yeah, so... Let's go through what you can do um, to practice and change your health. I'm sure you're engaging in that stuff right now. Have, you know, raise your hand if you're social distancing right now, you know. Uh, that's literally practicing and ch changing health behaviors. I couldn't think of a better set of material to start our distance learning with, <laughs> um, with, you know, it's so good. All right. Anyways, moving on. So once you uh, identify your locus of control, you can engage in self-affirming talk or self-affirming behaviors. Okay. Self-affirmation. Okay. I think I can, you know, the, the little engine that could. I think I can, I think I can. I thought I could, I thought I could, right? Um, and so uh, a lot of people tend to focus on their personal values with respect to health. Like, what kind of person do I want to be? Do I want to be a stinky man who doesn't um, care about, you know, my hygiene? Ellie just watched an episode of um, Veggie Tales where the, um, I suppose he's a cucumber. I, I honestly don't know. Um, he's got one tooth and he goes to the store and he buys a toothbrush, but then he sees, you know, really nasty food on sale and, um, like really stinky food on sale. And he's like, well, I can't get both. So I'm going to get the stinky food. And then he goes home and he sings about how much... Uh, how much he loves all of these stinky foods like anchovies, Limburger cheese, uh, onions, garlic, and blah, 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 right? And But he's not brushing his teeth. And so he gets a job at that grocery store uh, because his friend Tomato, I think his name is Bob. I don't, I don't know. Um, 
he goes and he starts stinking up the place because he smells bad. He's singing, he's sweeping, and then just all of the gunk is getting out of it. That's focusing on his personal value of loving stinky cheese. But then, but then, but then you have to wonder, is that good for everyone else? Okay, those could be your personal values, but they may not be good for everyone in your life. So you might want to think about what your personal values mean for your health, but then also the health of others. Again, we can apply this to the um, um, COVID-19 situation as well. So um, why, do, why do people not change their health behaviors. Well, we'll call these barriers. So emotional factors include your attitudes. So emotion, uh, emotional beliefs about a health habit. Okay, so this is going to predict whether or not you are um, going to do it. Again, I go back to Veggie Tales, but also just like brushing your teeth in general, right? Um, if you have a strong, positive attitude toward oral hygiene, then you are... <laughs> somebody just Facebook messaged me. I'm sure you heard that. Uh, you have... Uh, it's not a barrier. But if you don't have a strong opinion about brushing your teeth or you don't care about brushing your teeth, that's an effective attitude, and that's going to impact your ability to brush your teeth in a habitual way, okay? Um, if you have a distrust of doctors, you might not go to the, the doctor's office or you might not go to the hospital because you have a distrust of doctors. That's an effective attitude, okay? Um, instability of health behaviors, okay? Lots of different reasons for why a health behavior might be instable. Uh, or unstable, I should say. Um, one of those reasons is maybe you have uh, uh, insecurity of home, okay? So you don't have a place to brush your teeth, okay? Because you are uh, home insecure. Um, could be another thing like uh, if we, we talk about um, drinking alcohol, okay? And you drink uh, in social ways which then become potentially becomes either problem drinking disorder or alcohol use disorder okay and so the alcoholism as it, as was previously called you end up with um this instable health behavior okay um and these these instability of health behaviors will change over time they will definitely change over time based on your current circumstances, right? We're not always going to be uh, social distancing. Uh, I saw a funny little video of two little toddler, two little toddler boys running at each other. Um, and, you know, with the caption, like, once all the COVID-19 social distancing is over and they, like, embraced, you know, two little four-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old boys, <laughs> Uh, embracing like that, you know, so we're not always going to be doing this. And so whatever health behaviors you might be doing right now, like social distancing, that's healthy, but you also might be doing other, th other things that might not be healthy, like the lack of exercise, because you don't have a structure routine, you're always home, remember to take those walks, right? You can, you can go on walks, runs, that sort of thing. Excuse me. So we're not always going to be doing this sort of thing once the pandemic is over, which it will be, um, we can, you know, move on, right? All right, so I have the first, first poll from a distance. I honestly don't know how this is going to go. If you're on your computer, this probably might be easier just to use the poll ev.com slash aswan0108. Um, or you can use your phone. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, so asking you specifically, what is the biggest barrier to receiving health care in your life? Okay. Number C and number D. Oh, 
This is that's purely American right there. And uh specify in chat uh if you hit uh, if you hit other, if you hit other, um please specify in chat. Hmm. So All right. Health insurance too expensive. Oh boy, do I feel you on those. Oh man, 67%. Yep. I don't have enough time. That's an interesting one. Okay, ooh, neck and neck with too expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. I don't believe it's helpful. It's, okay. Uh, so if you did other, if, you, if, you, if you're typing in other, let me know in chat what that is. Yeah, you give yourself away, but you know what? It's, it's whatever. I am surprised it's moving more more around than I thought it would. More around than I thought it would. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Cool beans. Hate the wait times, David? Yeah, I mean, I assume that you are going to the VA um, and... From what I've heard, that's that's just it's unpleasant. Um, all right, Leah, procrastinating, making an appointment. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad nobody hits uh, hit C on that one. I'm I'm really glad nobody hit C. Watch C just pop in. <laughs> oh man. Are there any questions um, as we before we we uh, change subjects, change topics? Yeah, I feel you on that one. Although, I mean, I sympathize. I can't empathize, but yeah, I definitely, definitely, it's backlog, backlog. All right. Questions, questions before we move on, move on, move on. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. How are we all doing? Anybody having any significant challenges while we're, you know, since we're on the topic of health behaviors, anybody have any significant challenges right now um, due to the uh, coronavirus? Um, I've been sick since Friday, not with coronavirus, luckily, I mean. But um, at least not a, a, infecting the rest of my family uh, with probably a norovirus stomach bug. That was that was unpleasant all weekend. I didn't want to do a damn thing. Do a damn thing. Today, <laughs> hanging in there. Not really going anywhere. Braid, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. As uh, somebody wants to see you do well, that's probably the wrong door to open. Okay. Do something for a paper because the business is shut down. Oh. Fart sticks. I'm sorry. Um, definitely reach out to your instructor about that. If the business is closed. Not what you can write about, right? Whoa. Leave my house. Oh yeah, Katie. Uh, I'm glad to see that you're alive um, and that the surgery seemingly went well. Uh, knee is doing okay. Great. Slowly, uh, excellent. Can't do crunches. Okay. Oh no, Logan. 
Oh no, I'm so sorry, David. <laughs> David. Oh man, you want to come to my house and fix some things too? It's uh, we'll keep, we'll keep uh three meters away from you. Don't worry. Oh man. Woo. Yes, that's a good one, Caitlin. Uh, because this is one thing that we are struggling with with the kids um, because Ellie is constantly asking for food um, and it's 100% she is just super bored uh, because when she is engaged in doing something she actually doesn't ask for food it's when she's either like watching cartoons or whatever um, or kind of just like going from one room to the next she's just she'll just go I'm hungry yeah boredom not hunger Boredom, not hunger, you know. Yeah. Indeed. Uh. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. Uh, all right. Oh, no. A 99% positive. So, oh, no. Have you heard back yet, Sarah? Have you heard back yet? Oh, man. Oh. I'm so sorry. Um, is she doing okay? Okay, no. Oh, man. That rapid test needs to get in, like, super huge deployment. Like, it just needs to get out there. Yeah. Okay. Is she in, is she in um, isolation right now? I mean, that also sucks, too. If she is in isolation, you can't go see her for, like, two weeks. Just because of how long you have to be quarantined for. How long the virus stays active and communicable. Rough, 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 rough. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. Let's um, let's jump into the final topic for health behaviors, and that's um, how people are educated to change their behaviors, uh, or at least appealed to, persuaded. So this is, uh, if you've had social psych, you may remember um, talking about persuasion. Um, and so a, a number of these ideas listed here, let me try that again. Listed here are from that literature. Specifically has to do with health behaviors. Okay. Um, and so broadly, education appeals are vivid from an expert. They're strong arguments through and through. They're short, clear, and direct. They state their conclusions explicitly. They try to limit extremes okay and um sometimes if you're dealing with an audience that may be impartial or ambivalent include favorable and non-favorable points so i have a, uh, if you've seen the slides you've probably seen the images i'm going to give a content warning here because some of the images are pretty gnarly they don't necessarily always comport to this caution with extreme messages, just because I'm trying to use an image to highlight one aspect of these bullet points. So I'm not necessarily trying to find a message that hits all of them. Um, and not all messages are as effective as, as, effective as other messages. But content warning um, for some of the uh, images that I am about to show you, that I do not have videos for this. but. Here's the first one. So vividness. I, I This one, um, I could go with a, a whole host of images because most print ads 
to indicate prevention are vivid. Okay. And so here you have a set of lungs, also prescient for a acute respiratory illness that is attacking us now. Um, here you have a set of lungs made out of cigarettes. Okay. And um, if you are, <laughs> if you are, I know Logan, it's, it is actually very cool. Um, there are a lot of really good smoking, anti-smoking ones. Um, so choosing the best one, it, it all depends. Uh, this one's vivid because if you've ever seen people smoke cigarettes or if you've ever smoked a cigarette, then you know that you can light a cigarette with another cigarette, right? Just like a match would light a, a match head would light another match head. Um, and so the idea behind this is this burning bit here is representative of lung cancer and lung cancer specifically um, created by uh, and caused by um, smoky cigarettes, right? Um, and so the idea here is that this lung cancer will spread because, you know, these cigarettes will continue to light. It's vivid, even though it's on a black background, like it's very stark. The contrast, you know that these lungs are made out of cigarettes, right? Um, it's smoking. The smoke, the white smoke just catches the light against the black background. It's, uh, it's quite stunning. Yeah. And yes, it will burst into flames. Next one here. Expert communicator. So, um, not all of them are anti-smoking ones, by the way. <laughs> I made sure I, I jumped in with some other ones. But for this next one, for the second one, um, expert communicator. And the main thing I want you to pick out from this expert communicator, this one's really old. This is when the Surgeon General, um, these are four Surgeon General warnings, right? So these, and you'll see these on cigarette packs and other uh, things still to this day, okay? This is from the 19, I wanna say late 60s, early 70s advertisement. I mean, you can tell the quality in color palette, color palette is uh, sort of muted. But, um, so these are four different warnings. So first they started with one and then they added a second one, then they added a third one and then they added a fourth one, right? So smoking causes lung cancer, heart disease, emphysema, and may complicate pregnancy. That was the first one the U.S. Surgeon General came out with, right? That's our expert communicator. Uh, two, quitting smoking now greatly reduces serious risks to your health. That was the second one they developed. The third one, when they found out more about what smoking does to um, prenatal development, they came out with this one, smoking by pregnant women may result in fetal injury, premature birth, and low birth weight, right? And then they came out with a fourth one, cigarette smoke contains carbon monoxide, right? <laughs> And then you see, um, then you saw a later ads. So after they dropped this, after the Surgeon General dropped this one, you would see ads like people smoking um, out of a tailpipe, right? Because carbon monoxide is, is part of car exhaust. So um, that is your expert communicator. Um, not always, not always used. I think out of all of the ones that education, out of all of the characteristics of education appeals, expert communicator is by far the least used. Um, and more and more these days, because apparently who cares what experts have to say? Okay. The next one, strong arguments at the beginning and the end. It's probably a little bit difficult to read uh, this one, and that's fine. You don't need to necessarily know everything. So the reason why I chose this one, this is from the North Carolina um, Eat Smart, Move More campaign um, from the um, early 2000s, I think. So right size your portions. That's the strong argument at the uh, at the beginning, okay, and at the end. So next time, remember to right size your portions. The same message, right? Right size your portions. The little information about what you do, right? So uh, eating large portions add extra calories. Extra calories means more pounds on you. Most of us think we eat less than we do. 
Eat smaller portions of food and drinks at leisurely pace to fill you up, not out. Right? And so, so next time, remember to right size your portions. At the beginning, at the bend, at the end. Okay? Um, so that is strong arguments beginning and end. Uh, as far as most of these go, you're not going to see a lot of advertisements use strong arguments beginning and end because they're most likely going to latch on to the vividness, right? And they won't have any words, okay? Short, clear, direct messages. We could use the last one for that. We could use the last one, but I thought I'd throw in another one. So this is another um, nutri nutrition one. 2,000 calories a day is all most adults should eat. Um, this has a should have an asterisk next to it, but of course it doesn't because um, our daily value on our nutrition labels all use that 2,000 calorie um, figure. But the asterisk is for uh, something that we are going to talk about when we get to nutrition, I think next week, uh, when, we, when we talk about calorie and caloric intake. And that's your um, basal metabolic rate. So some people have higher metabolisms than others, okay? And so 2,000 calories is an average of many of the uh, BMRs that um, have been recorded. Okay, and so that's where that 2,000 uh, number has come from. Some, you may need more, you may need less than 2,000. But that is a short, clear, and direct message. 2,000 calories a day, that's all you need. Okay, and so <laughs> that, uh, uh, just trying to get my, uh, that, there we go, there we go. I got it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get better at this. That uh, cupcake is almost... 500 calories. It's almost a quarter of what you what you need. Maybe did I call it a cupcake? It's a muffin. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> so maybe you could just eat that for breakfast. It's a pretty chunky breakfast uh, as far as calories go. Uh, but sometimes you might you know you might be the person who really likes those chunky breakfasts. Okay. And then it says, oh, healthy snack? Maybe not. Yeah, you know, it depends. Okay, but that's what a, a short, clear, and direct message would look like. Okay. Uh, messages should state conclusions explicitly. Here's the explicit conclusion right here. Secondhand smoke leads to chronic allergies in children. Okay, so it's asking a couple of questions. You know, is your child just, just have allergies because allergies are a thing? Or is it damage from secondhand smoke? Which you can see the font is a little bit larger than the allergies one, and then secondhand smoke leads to chronic allergies in children. And this is from NYC Health Department. So this is an ad advertising campaign regarding smoking uh, and um, uh, in New York, New York City to be exact. And they had a 311 number for um, quitting smoking, right? So. All right. Woo! Almost there. Caution with extreme messages. Okay. So, <laughs> lest smoking get thrown under the bus. Let's talk about teen pregnancies. No, I'm just kidding. We're not talking about teen pregnancies. I just wanted to show you this this very extreme message, right? A, a young boy a, that is a boy, right? You can all tell that he is, um, ha has male, right? And he is pregnant. He is pregnant. Pregnant. How is Babby formed? Yeah. So this was a, uh, advertising campaign from B, uh, B-U-B Healthy. Okay. Uh, obviously an ad campaign about, um... Um, teen pregnancies. Now, I want to say that this message might be shocking at the start. I mean, <laughs> reading your reading your ch uh, chat messages um, kind of uh, gets to that point, right? Um, if you showed this to a group of teenagers it's unlikely that the point would actually make its way home. 
And that's because the image itself is shocking, not the message. Okay. Yes, Katie. Pregnans. Yep. How baby get pregnans? Well, they group things together. Simplicity. Um, anyways, that's my psychology pun for everyone. Uh, so, <laughs> we have this shocking message that is meant to be shown to teens, and it's meant to be a, um, a message like, hey, yo, have safe sex if you're gonna have sex, right? Um, but the image itself is unexpected, and then you, like, you lose all ability to sort of capture the entire message um it's no longer that the teen pregnancy thing is no longer salient you're like wow that is a um teenage male and he is uh, significantly pregnant and still skateboarding you know props right props to the kid um what were we talking about oh teen pregnancies yeah okay so, it, it, so that's why education appeals should have caution with extreme messages Okay, so I use that. So I, I, I'm using this image to sort of uh, point counterpoint with um, extreme messaging. Okay. All right. Yeah, that is true, Logan. Well, you know, we'll, we'll see if people get their bums out of their butts if uh, we get proper health education. All right. And yep, and that is the T. All right. So. Um, I had one more, uh, or no, uh, sorry. Yeah, one more. Uh, depending on the audience, communication should include favorable or non-favorable points. I gotta tell you, it's very difficult to find things <laughs> on this one. Um, so I would say that most of your education appeals that are going on right now, um, as far as favorable and non-favorable points, I, I point you to all, all of the coronavirus and COVID-19 stuff that is on your social media feeds that is um well ellie's back and um she brought a friend you want to show them what who you brought it's your giraffe no i'm gonna bring it in yep yeah. you're such a dork <sighs> cool all right Okay, go upstairs, please. Daddy's working. <laughs> of course you don't. I'm I'm almost done. I'm almost done, Ellie. <laughs> this is this first video is going great. Oh man, it's gonna go up on YouTube and people are gonna be like, "That's all I watched it for." Uh, anyways. So. Um, I couldn't really find a good representation of this one that would fit into an image, okay? So, and, and it honestly depends on the audience. And so that's why I think all of the coronavirus and COVID-19 stuff um, right now that's appearing pretty much everywhere um, is uh, a good place to look into this one, right? And this is educational, right? This is the heart of being educational okay all right uh, moving on so fear appeals so these aren't educational appeals these are fear appeals um, so what you see here are two little boys okay toddlers oh, they're toddlers and um, you know how on every plastic bag there is a a, a a warning that says you know don't put this over your head. Don't play with this because it's a suffocation hazard. Well, those are bags over their heads. Um, but it, their bags are made out of secondhand smoke. Okay. Um, and they're essentially breathing that in, right? So th this is an ad campaign um, that used this. This is actually, these, these are going to appear again when we talk about smoking, because I have a um, compilation of uh, quote-unquote best anti-smoking campaigns as part of our discussion about tobacco and nicotine. 
Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's pretty engaging, right? It grabs you. You're like, holy criminy. Uh, these two little boys are crying, right? And, um, they're suffocating because it's secondhand smoke. So this would be considered a fear appeal. Okay. And so if you want people, <laughs> there's the giraffe. If you want people to change their behavior right away, then you might show them a fear appeal. It's my class, baby. I'm not actually talking really to anyone in particular. They're all on the other side of the internet. Okay. So I, I don't have time to explain the internet to you right now. Um, maybe I'll explain it to you in a couple of years. All right. Um, if you tell people, hey, if you don't do this right now, you are your, um, your, uh, kidneys are going to explode, then you probably get people to change their behavior right away. Okay. Um, again, with the coronavirus, fear appeals kind of worked. And then we sh sort of transitioned to education appeals. Ellie, please stop. Um, so, uh... Hold on. So, if we... If we want to get people to change their behavior, we'll say, you know, if you don't change your behavior, people are going to die. And that's pretty quick on getting people to change their behaviors. This is, this is going to be great, everyone. <laughs> but research has shown that long-term changes aren't actually effective just by using fear, okay? You can scare a smoker with kids into be, into quitting smoking, but they're probably just going to relapse after they're no longer exposed to these kinds of messages, okay? Um, and so if you want to change somebody's behavior immediately, then scare the hell out of them. If you want to have them change their behavior to a point where they are going to um, maybe make it a health habit, then you need to use educational appeals, okay? So that's how the two um, interact there. All right, I have one, uh, have one more, um, one more poll. And then we will finish with a couple of videos. That's great, baby. That's great. Can you take it upstairs, please? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Um, I don't think I can show these videos because of the lag. Um, I'm going to try. Uh, and if they're laggy for you, then you can watch them either when I end them. We're going to go a little bit longer than 11.50, so if you do have to run then you're more than welcome to uh, say sayonara. I'm going to keep recording until I'm done going over the material. Uh, I would have finished on time had an interloper not interloped. All right. Most people have not been impacted by a campaign to change their behavior. Okay. Um, advertising has changed, I would say, in the last 20 years. Uh, versus when I was growing up, um, and all we had was television. When all we had was television. Uh, so, yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, you're not exposed in the same way. Like, Rachel Lee Cook smashing an egg and, um, destroying her kitch kitchen, um, for the uh, ad council, um, the egg was your brain and the pan was heroin. And that's what heroin does to your family, your friends, your job. That is burned into my brain. 
right? <laughs> I'm not going to do heroin. My brain does not want to be a burst egg. Okay? And if you've seen that ad, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? You know what I'm talking about. Okay, well, it is 11.50. Uh, so if you do need to take off, it's fine. You can. You don't need to, to say that in chat. I appreciate you stopping by and watching. Um, you can catch the last slide here uh, when it goes up live on YouTube or um, on the, the VOD stream here on Twitch. Okay. So here, this is the last, this is the last slide. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about how you change uh, health behaviors into health habits and two ways to frame and I have here um, Two very famous milk got milk commercials. Actually one is not a got milk commercial one is a uh, the, the this one here is um, from an 80s uh, Milk campaign that was the it does a body good campaign um, that preceded got milk um, the first, the first actual Got Milk campaign was the Aaron Burr, uh, who shot Alexander Hamilton, and the guy's stuffing peanut butter, um, bread in his mouth. Who does that, by the way? Uh, and he gets called, radio program, um, uh, and, uh, yeah, it's hilarious. Anyways, uh, there are two, two, um, frames framings that we can talk about, right? So we have the gain promotion frame and the loss um, prevention frame. So promotion. When we talked about this two weeks, three weeks ago, whatever it was, um, we were talking about how um, health psychology is in a, in a promotion. So we want to promote healthy behaviors. So a way to, to think of a gain or a promotion frame is good things can happen if you do this behavior. Okay, so for example, before I play the milk video, an advantage of getting regular mammograms, if you are a female, is that you will find tumors more early, or earlier, more early, what am I saying, um, which will increase your treatment options, right? So uh, the advancement of breast cancer um, impacts treatment options, right? So if you do those regular mammograms, then you'll be able to have more treatment options. That is good. That is an advantage. Okay. Now, milk. On the other hand, let's 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 talk about milk. It does a body good. Just that message by itself is um, just that message by itself is a gain frame. And mammograms are um, images of breast tissue. Okay. Um, you can take a mammogram of, of any human being, but the humans that generally speaking get mammograms are females with, of course, larger breast tissues and um, mammary glands, larger mammary glands. Um, so here's the vintage. First dance, and who dance with me except Jeffrey Kaiser, the biggest nerd. Cheer up, you're drinking milk and this is you in a few years. Not with this brace face and gross hair. Well, you're growing fast, and milk can help you get a great smile and gorgeous hair. But my body, the only difference between me and the guys is this dress. Hey, you can see we turned out just fine. Who's that? That's Jeffrey Kaiser. Milk, it does a body good. I mean, it's, it's obviously dated. It's obviously dated, right? I mean, let's not send girls this message. Uh, anymore, um, but it is positive in a certain uh, certain way, right? So it's still a gain frame. Let's contrast this with lost frames. Okay, so this is if uh, this is if you are doing. I'm sorry. Let me restart. This is bad things can happen if you don't do the healthy behavior. Bad things happen if you don't do the behavior. So keeping with my mammograms, mammogram. Uh, example before we jump into the hilarious got milk commercial so a disadvantage of failing to get regular mammograms is that you won't find tumors early which will leave you with fewer fewer treatment options and potentially uh, a situation where the breast cancer is too far advanced and it starts metastasizing and spreading across your body um so you know 
it's almost a fear tactic, but not necessarily. A lot of times it's used for fear. Like this commercial. Okay, so let me play this Got Milk commercial. Drink your milk, kids. I don't want milk. Milk's for babies. Yeah. Babies. Well, yeah. Well, I happen to know that milk helps build strong bones. So drink up. Well, Mr. Miller told me he never drinks milk. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Got milk. Ah, good time. So yeah, that would be, um, hey, if you don't drink milk, then you're going to be like that old dude and try to lift a wheelbarrow full of dirt and your arms fall off, you know, because your bones aren't great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, either one can affect anyone's behavior. Uh, it depends on your motivation to change your um, health habits, uh, your healthy behaviors, that sort of thing. Let's, um, I, I will say that both of them work in a, in, in, in a slightly different way. So promotion frames are more likely and more successful to get folks to start a behavior, okay? So if we frame it in a good way, you'll get all of these good things if you do this behavior. Um, preven prevention frames are successful at maintaining that behavior over time, right? Because if you stop doing the behavior, then the bad things will start happening, okay? Does that make sense? So promotion frames or gain frames, starting behaviors. Prevention or loss frames, maintain a behavior. Alrighty, any questions before we end this stream? I'm gonna go rest after this, my goodness. Rough. <laughs> <laughs> rough first go with the chitlins i'm glad you all like the chitlins though you know <sighs> all righty well if you have any questions um feel free to email me or message me um i do not need milk thank you milk is disgusting i get my calcium in other ways Alrighty, i'm gonna end the um recording here